23. Exodus 33, verse 18 to 23. After that, we'll read other two scriptures this morning. If you are in Exodus, can you say yes? I read. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, why my glory passed by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Hebrews 1, chapter 1, verse 1, down to verse 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, at in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on I. Job 22, 21 to 25. The book of Job chapter 22. Verse 21 to 25. I read, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Let me read two, of two verses along with it. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Let me stop there. By the grace of God this morning, I'd like to continue on the message titled, Walking in the Glory of Newness. Ever say, Walking in the Glory of Newness. Look at your neighbor and say, You can walk in the glory of of newness. Look at someone else who cares to believe you this morning. Say, you can walk in the glory of newness. 
Lord, add your blessing to your eternal word. Reveal yourself through your word this morning. And let every man, every woman, male and female, old and young, be blessed. I ask in Jesus' name that you will take hold of my tongue, my intellect, my heart. And help me to say exactly what you want your people to hear. And let the name of your son be glorified this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Let all movements please stop. Last week, I made mention of the fact that God, our God is known as the God of glory. He is the God of glory. The Bible also tells us that he is the king of glory. According to this book of Psalm 24, he is the king of glory. Where he said, who is this king of glory? He said, the Lord, God Almighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He said, he is the king of glory. So we have a God that the Bible calls the God of glory and the king of glory. So for you and I to walk in the glory of newness, one thing the Lord made me to know, which I'm sharing with us in this series of message, is that you and I need to know the God of glory. Many people are not walking in the glory of, of God because they did not know God. They have not gotten themselves acquainted with him. They have not have an encounter with God. An encounter with God will make a whole lot of change in your life. When people have an encounter with God, such people don't need any man to preach to them anymore. God said in the book of Jeremiah, I think Jeremiah 36, he said they will know me. He said I will reveal myself to them, I will give them a new heart, and they will know me. He said, no man will tell each other, know the law. He said, for they shall know me from the greatest, from the least to the greatest. May we know God. Amen. I said, may we know him. Amen. So knowing God is so important to our lives. Why we are here on this earth. God has a great desire. And that desire is that his people should know him. I told us that last week. It is a great desire because knowing God will solve so many things around our lives. And so, my prayer for all of us today, as we fellowship and search out God on the pages of the Bible, may he reveal himself to us in Jesus' name. Time will not permit me to say quite a number of things that I said last week, but I'll just say one or two things. I said to know God means to have understanding of God. It means to be aware of him through observation. Especially when you observe the Bible. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says that this book of the Lord should not depart out of our mouth. He said we shall meditate in. He said but thou shall meditate there in day and night that thou mayest observe to do. When you read the Bible and you observe to do, one thing the Bible is going to tell you is going to tell you about God. The Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 39, he said, search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life. He said, they speak about me. When you search the scripture, the scripture is about one person and that is Jesus. Most of the time, many of us read the letters, but we don't read the spirit behind the word. There is a spirit that put the word together. There is, there's a spirit behind the word. When you read the scripture, you are reading a person. And there is no way the nature and the attitude and attribute of that person will not jump into your life. God wants us to get to know him. I said to know him also means to recognize. 
I told you that many things God is doing in our life. Some people attribute it to Satan. And there's some things Satan is doing that some people attribute to God. You know, there's this saying among other religions. They said, whenever bad things happen to them, they say, I'm all alone on him. That God brought this. God cannot do evil. Lack of knowledge will make you to judge God in a wrong way. When you don't know him, you judge him in a wrong way. So God wants us to know him. And to also know, I will stop here, is to be, to feel certain about him. Ever say certain. God wants us to feel certain. In our world today, people have been tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Many people have been tossed to and fro because they are not deep in God. You are, they are not certain about their God. When you are certain about your God, no matter what is happening, you stay put. The Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 1 to 5. Let me read, put it on the screen for me, Psalm 46. He said, the Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Ever say, God is our refuge? From verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Everybody say God is a very present help. But not many people know that he's a very, he's a pre, a very present help. And so they will begin to run from pillar to post. Instead of running to God who is very present. Can you help me tell your neighbor? Say God is present with you. A very present help in the time of trouble. Verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. Tell your neighbor, say, I will not fear. Though the heart be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the water thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Say, there is a river. There is a river. The stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. It takes you and I to get to know him and feel certain about him not to be shaken in time of trouble. I've seen people shaking in time of trouble. Shaking violently, shaking vigorously, shaking, trying to move from pillar to post. But God said, when you know me, he said, God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of her. May God show you himself. May you be certain about your God. Oh, I said, may you be certain about your God. So it's important for us to get to know God. Issues will occur. Problem will happen. But when you know God, you will not run away to anything that is not that cannot help you. Most of the time, people run away from things that cannot help them. They end up multiplying their own problem. When you're supposed to run to God, Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me, and I will what? I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. So knowing God is important and is one of the greatest desires of God for every one of us. God does not just want us to be religious because there are so many religious people today without the content of God in their heart. In the days of Jesus, Jesus himself said, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 24, he said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Which means that many religious people, they have a way of calling God, but they are not doers of the word. James 1, 22, he said, Be ye the doer of the word, and not hearers only, 
Who are you deceiving? He said, deceiving your own self. Which means you can be in the church and you are deceiving yourself. You can hold the Bible and you are deceiving yourself. Why? Because you are holding what you are not a doer of. One important thing that knowing God will make you and I to do is a doer of the word. When you know God, you will do the word. A doer of the word knows God, not, a, not someone who quotes the word. If you quote it and you are not a doer, you are still not in the, you are still not in the good book of God. But one thing that makes you to be a doer of the word, one thing that makes you to be a doer of the word is knowing God. When you know him, you will do his word. So God is calling us to himself during this season of our lives because he has that desire to, for us to know him. This is the end time. In the end time, perilous times will come. Second Timothy 3.1 He said, Know ye also that in the latter times, perilous times shall come. Time difficult to bear. Time difficult to cope with. He said, perilous time, a difficult time, a time of trouble. You don't need to go far. My wife and I, we were talking so many, uh, talking a few days ago about what is happening all around us in the country. In those days, about 20 years ago, it's only in Afghanistan we hear people throw bombs. We don't hear it yet. But all of a sudden, it has come very close. What we hear that is far away, as in the end time, in the latter times, perilous times shall come. The time of perilous time is a time people need to run to know God. You need to know him on a personal basis. You need to have the knowledge of it because there are fear in many places. Anywhere there is fear, there is no faith. It takes knowing God to have faith in him. If someone listen to me today. Perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own self. And so many other things in that scripture. So God is inviting us to know him. Because it's only the people that know him that will survive the last day attack of the enemy. Only the people that know God we shall survive the onslaught of Satan upon the world. Whether you know it or not, Satan hates you. Can I say it again? He hates you. When God threw him down from heaven, the Bible says he came down in a great wrath, knowing that his time is short. And within that short time, he wants to do all he wants to do to destroy, to kill, to silence God's people. But you will not be silent. Amen. I said you will not be silent in the name of Jesus. So God said when you know him. You will survive the onslaught of the enemy. In the last days. Jesus encountered with the disciples. In John chapter 14 verse 7. Verse 7 down to verse 11. Jesus here was speaking to Philip. He said, Philip, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. He said, I'm from henceforth. You know him and have seen him. He said, if you had known me, you see, you can be, you can be in church walking with Jesus and not knowing God. They were walking with Jesus and they did not know God. And, be, and Philip said, show up the father and it's sufficient for us. And Jesus looked at him, that's verse 6, 5 and 6. He said, Philip, having been so long with you, so you do not know me. Is there anyone who has seen me and seen who has seen the father? He is the brightness of the glory of God, the express image of his person. Even while he was here, they still did not know very well. The, the book of Revelation chapter 1. There's this disciple the Bible called the beloved. John the beloved. That does not mean God did not love everybody. But he called himself. He accepted it. 
You know, you, you can call yourself by the name of, you can call yourself the way you want to call yourself. Said that the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that does not mean he did not love everyone, but he called himself, Jesus loved me. Can somebody say, Jesus loves me? Whatever you call yourself is what you, is what you will, you, you, will, you, uh, you will practice. You will know the disciple whom Jesus loved. He loved Peter. He loved other apostles. But this one called himself, I am a disciple whom Jesus loved. Can you say, I'm a disciple whom Jesus loved? I will be telling you more about that. When, you know, anytime this, he always sits near Jesus. In fact, he goes ahead, not just sitting near Jesus, but to recline on him like a baby do to their mother. That's what he does. He was so bold, he believed he loved him, he called that love to himself, and he reclined on him and leaned on Jesus, and Jesus did not say, get away. You know, many of us, we always think, if I do it, he will say, get away. It's because you don't know his love. I'll be telling you about that. Jesus Christ did not push him. You know, if your mother is uncomfortable, he will push you, but not Jesus. These were grown-up guys. When a grown-up guy begin to behave like a small boy, because he saw something that others could not see. I pray today, may you see what others did not see in God. He saw what others did not see. I am a disciple whom the Lord... When he now saw Jesus in Revelation, in his glory, the Bible says, after all the description of the glory, he said he fell down like one that is dead. That's to let you know what they knew him to be as a human being is different from what he is. When he saw him in glory, he fell down as dead. This was, he could not recline this time around. When he saw the glory of God. May we all see God in his glory. Amen. It will change our perspective about life. It will change everything about us. Knowing God changes people. It changes your mindset, it changes what you do, it changes how you speak, it changes a whole lot about you. My prayer for all of us is that may Jesus reveal himself to us. I said, may Jesus reveal himself to us. Say, so whoever have seen me, I've seen the Father also. Philip said unto him, Lord, Show us the Father, and is sufficient for us. Jesus said unto him, that's verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how seest thou? Then show us the Father. We need to know him. In Mark chapter 12, verse 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. When we know the scripture, and you, you God through the scripture will make you to know the power that God has in himself. And that will make us to be, to be able to trust him the more. In Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 he said then shall, you, shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord everyone that we know the Lord must have a desire to know most people come to church but the thought of God is not in their heart they want to see their friend they want to see their colleague they want to see but God is no longer in their heart I don't want that situation to be, to be in your life I want to know God. Can somebody say, say, I want to know God. Say, I want to see God. There must be a desire in your heart. He said, we will know him if we follow on to know the Lord. Knowing the Lord requires consistency. Consistency in fellowshipping. 
Consistency in reading the word. Consistency in hearing the word. Consistency in worshiping with other members of the body of Christ. God wants to know us. He said, we will know him if we follow on to know the Lord. It's important for us to know that. John 8, 19. Here were the children of Israel conversing with Jesus. Then said Jesus in verse 19. Said they unto, their, unto him. Then said they unto him. Where is your father? These were the Pharisees and all that people. They were saying, where is your father? Jesus answered, ye neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. Knowing God is not seeing God in a bodily picture. Some people, because God revealed himself, in the body, they said they know God. No, that's not. He can reveal himself in a picture manner. Unto you, but that does not mean you know God. Knowing God is to know the attributes of God. Knowing God means to know everything that the Bible says about him. Which, by the grace of God, we will look into some of them here in this message. It may not be today, but we look into those things that God wants us to know about him. So if you have known me, you will have known my father also. In Psalm 46 verse 10. Psalm 46 verse 10. The Bible recorded there. He said, be still. Tell your neighbor, say, be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the Eden. I will be exalted in the heart. Which means the greater desire of God. His, his people should just get to know him. He said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the people. I will be exalted in the heart. Let me show us reasons why you need to know God. Various reasons why you need to know God. Number one, when you know him, you will no longer walk in darkness with regard to your life. Knowing God takes you out of darkness. The scripture tells us in Psalm 27 verse 1. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Knowing God makes you never to walk in darkness with regard to your life. First John chapter 1 verse 5 says, This day is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Ever say God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. When someone is a child of God, you have met him, you have confessed him as your Lord and your personal Savior, he takes you out of darkness to his marvelous light. And that light is God. Everybody say that light is God. It's not the light of the sun and moon. It's the light is himself. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, God called himself out. Is different that line, different from Genesis chapter 1, verse 16. Here is God saying, let there be light, which means let God appear on the scene. I pray today, may God appear on the scene of your life. In every confused state of your being, may God appear. In every area of your life where there is darkness, may the light of God shine the earth. God was not calling for the light of the moon and sun in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1. He was calling himself out. His attribute is nature. Let God appear on the scene. That is why whenever there are issues in your life and God steps in, you begin to see him working things out. 
light of God is breaking forth upon somebody's life. I say light of God is breaking forth upon your life. May darkness disappear out of your life. May darkness disappear out of your destiny. I said, may darkness disappear out of your life. Let God appear. And that is why whenever you know him, things begin. Look, when we got born again, we don't discover certain things that we were doing in those days. So, you mean, I was the one doing that. You feel ashamed of yourself. Why? You were in the darkness. Darkness cannot reveal itself. And that's why when somebody gives his or her life to Christ and you step out of darkness, you begin to hate what you love, what you once love. If now you still love what you once love, it shows that your salvation is hanging. You are not saved. Let me even say it point blank. Like somebody said, Pastor, you are very straight. That's why God is straight. You are not saved. If you still love what you used to love, then you are not saved because God is light. There is no body that comes out of darkness that will not hate darkness. Many people got born again from Islamic faith. They saw the difference. In fact, they look at some people who have, been, who have been in Christianity all the days of their life. You people don't know what you are saying. You don't know. Is it because you see them that because they were in darkness, because their God is far from them, they don't have that relationship on a personal basis, talking, walking, talking with God. Now they got born again. And they now have talking, walking with God. God can minister to them. Show them things. And move in their lives. They will hate darkness where they are coming from. I've met people before who claim to be Christian. But they still love darkness. They still love what is in the darkness. They still love the taste of sin. I was telling somebody this last week. I said, you are doing all of these things, you are not saved. No matter how you claim to be. You don't have an encounter with God yet. When you have an encounter with God, you don't need pastor to tell you, guide you. You yourself, you will know. <laughs> I can't continue like that. Those things I used to do, I do them no more. You run away from friends, bad friends. You run away from those things. You don't even pass in front of it. The place where they are selling good. You don't pass there. Why? Because you are trying to say, no, I don't want to be tempted when I'm passing by. You don't fellowship with unfruitful work of darkness. What you do is that you expose it. You don't carry guests all around that you are not married to. Because you are once in darkness, but light is now. May that light radiate more in your life. I say, may that light radiate more in your life. When someone knows God, that person has come out of darkness. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. He said, but you are a chosen generation. Everybody say, I'm a chosen generation. A royal priesthood and holy nation. A peculiar people. Oh, look at what God calls you. A royal, gener a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar. Everybody say, I am peculiar. It doesn't matter the kind of clothes you wear to church this morning. Heaven has put a cloth upon you apart from this one. And it's a cloth that makes you peculiar. Everybody say, I have the robe of righteousness upon, my, upon myself. 
God said, you are a peculiar people. And as a peculiar people, you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of where? Into where? His marvelous lights. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous lights. Which in time past were not a people. Look at your name. Look, God said you are not a people. He does not reckon with you before. Anyone in darkness is not reckoned with. You were not a people. But and now the people of God. You were not a people. You were not reckoned with that time. But you are now a people what? Of God. Which had not obtained what? Mercy. But now I've done what? Obtain mercy. Can you please wave your hand and say, thank God for your mercy upon my life. He said, in time past, no mercy for you, but now you have, a, you, you have obtained it. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain, tell your neighbor, say, abstain from fleshly what? Lost, which war against the soul. Devil want to drag you back. You are the one that will make up your mind through the knowledge of God. I'm not going back. Help us say, I'm not going back. Say loud and say, I will never go back. When there is a pool from that girl to you, what do you do? You run away. A pool from that boy to you, what do you do? You run. Because devil uses that pool to want to drag you back into the vomit. Abstain from fleshly lust. And that fleshly lust, the Bible said, it war against where? The soul. Once you are called out of darkness, never you want to, never you desire darkness. The Bible said it is a shame to even speak about what they do in darkness. It's a shame. And so as a child of God, you must not desire the darkness that God has brought you out from. John 1, 4 to 5. The Bible says, in the beginning from verse 1, was the, he said, in him was life, and the life was what? The light of man. The life of God in us. God said, that light will turn to light in you. The light God gave us is the light of man. Is a, is, is, the life becomes our light. And the light shineth. That light shineth where? In darkness. And darkness comprehend. The, another version says darkness cannot overcome it. I pray the light of God in you will not be overcome by the darkness around you. I said the light of God in you will not be overcome by the darkness around you. Come and say a bigger amen to that. Because in this life, there are pressure from the kingdom of darkness. Pressure to drag some people back into darkness. If you have tested light, you will never want to go into darkness. You will never want to go there. And so as a child of God, when you know him, when you come to know him through the death, the barrier, and the resurrection of Jesus, never in your life want to go back into the darkness. Number two reason why you need to know him. You need to know him because knowing him Make you to find yourself in him. Knowing God makes you to find yourself in God. You are part of God's plan extended. We are the hand of God extended. We are part of God's global plan for the world. When you know him, you find your purpose in him. Every one of us were made with a purpose in the mind of God. But it takes you to get to know him 
to find your purpose in him. Find your purpose. There are things God wants to do on the earth. He could have done it by himself, but he chose you to carry it out. So when you are carrying it out, who is doing that work? That's why we point it to God. God wants to sing in Rema Chapel. He has chosen you to sing. God wants to preach to people in Rema Chapel. He has chosen me to do it. God wants to deliver some people, heal some people. He is the one. That's why the Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. When you know him, you will find yourself in him. You will know that you are the hand of God extended. You are the plan of God extended. You are the purpose of God extended. Can I hear amen from somebody? Yeah. Knowing God makes us to find ourselves in him. Not everyone calling God have found themselves in God. You are doing something else apart from what the purpose is. You are getting involved in other things apart from what he has made you to be. When you know him, you will find yourself in him. The scripture tells us about God. In Acts chapter 17 verse 28. The scripture says in him we live and move and have our being. Ever say in him we live. We move and we have our being. He is the fountain, he is the source of our life. Every known river has a source. That river is an extension of the fountain. That's why in my native tongue, they always say a river who forget its source, what will happen? We dry up. May you never dry up. <laughs> so when you are living your life, you should know that you are the extension of the fountain and source of life. And you must not forget it because you will dry up. Let me tell you, I have seen dry up Christian. It's a bad thing to behold. When you know God, follow him. Never you slide back. Never you slide back. Never you go back. Be consistent with God. For it, a river that forgets its source, it will dry up. Jesus said in John 15, verse 4, verse 5, he said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Every branch in me that bear not forth good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Every branch that is not bearing fruit, the kind of fruit I want, say is cut down. May you never be cut down. Amen. I said, may you never be cut down. Amen. It's very important for us to know him because knowing him, we find ourselves in him. Your purpose is in God. Your placement is in God. Your future is in God. Your destiny is in God. Everything about you is in God. For in him we live and we have our being. Psalm 90 says, Lord, thou art been our dwelling place from eternity. You have been our dwelling place. God is our dwelling place. Whether you know it or not, you are living in God. And you need to live well in God. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. You need to know that God said, I want you to know me. Knowing him will make you to find yourself in God and in God's plan. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. God told Jeremiah, he said, before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee. I have experienced you already. Before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctify, I set you apart. And I ordain you as a prophet unto where? The nations. Every one of us, we are ordained for one thing or the other. 
You may not be a prophet. You may be in terms of the, the capital prophet. You may be God's a prophet and or apostle. They are, the meaning is someone who is sent forth. You may be sent forth into the medicine. You may be sent forth into engineering field. You may have been sent forth into IT industry. You are sent forth. You need to know that this is part of God's plan. To send you forth so that your knowledge there will better this world. But if you don't know, you think you send yourself. When you get a job in a, in a place, you think you just got the job. God is not part of it. We have been sent into this world. And we will return back to give account. You need to know that. That you are not here all by yourself alone. Someone sent you. Tap your neighbor if he cares to listen. Say, someone sent you here. You need to know it. I'm sent here. I am sent to Rema Chapel to fulfill a purpose. God did not send you to other jobs. He sent you here. So what are the purpose in, in the heart of God for you to fulfill here? All the trainings you have ever received, training in the field of your endeavor from your primary up to now is a package for you to be useful in the house of God. He sent you here. He packaged you with information that is important for the, for the kingdom. He, because, you see, let me tell you, for you to know that you are not sent there for your mouth only. People die. How many things did they carry along? Nothing. Nothing. If you see any rich man, that money is buried and people get to know that he was buried with dollars. After that barrier, especially in Nigeria, few hours, you will see the, the coffee casket outside. Because someone who was there will tell someone who, can, who, want, who want dollars. They will remove the cups and carry. People that even remove the head of human being. What will is it that you bury there that they will not remove? To know that you are sent for the kingdom. God is packaging you together for where? The kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom of God. Nobody lives here forever. If we live here forever, you can amass and amass. So the purpose of your life is not money. It's not wealth. It's not resources. God will give you enough to sustain you here. But you are beyond here. Oh God. Everybody say, I am beyond this world. Don't live as if everything about you is this world. There is a source of your life. You will go back to the source. They always say that every river takes their water from the ocean and they still go back to where? The ocean. God, through invisible thing, through the visible thing, he has made us to know where things will end up be. When you see ocean get water and the water become <laughs> that water flow and become a river. In another place called it this a river. That river took its source from where? The ocean. And where is that river flowing to again? We still in the final analysis link to the ocean somewhere. We will all go to God. But while you are here, your source will make sure that you are sustained. It will make sure that you are fed. It will make sure that you do not lack anything. You will walk in the glory of God. Everybody say, I will walk in the glory of God. But you must never forget that when you know him, you will find yourself in him. He is the source of your life. Source of your destiny. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says. And God breathed into man. And he became a living soul. That is the source of life. And at the end of the day. That life will go back to the owner. We must know. So that you will not be walking on this earth. As if you are going to live here forever. 
Do as much as you do within the frame of God's blessing. Be comfortable. Have things. But don't put your heart in things. Because the maker of all things wants you to know that he is the source you are returning to. Everybody say, we, we will all return to him. Number three. Why God wants you to know him is because when you know him, he will fill your heart with absolute peace. Everybody say absolute peace. One of the things about God is that he's a God of peace. Everybody say God of peace. One evidence that comes to us when we give our life to Christ is that there's that just peace you don't understand. The Bible says the peace of God that passes what? All understanding. There is a peace. Not because you have just got married or you have just gotten a good job, but there's that peace. If you don't have that peace, then something is wrong with your salvation. Salvation comes to us, bring peace into us. That peace cannot be measured by man. The Bible says it is beyond human understanding. He is a God of peace, so it's like God sitting in your heart. And that peace is going to be dear. I pray for someone this morning who is troubled, trouble on every side. May the peace of God rest upon your life. Amen. I said may the peace of God rest upon your soul. Amen. Knowing God bring peace into your life. Jesus said in John 14 27, he said peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. What makes me Jesus God? I've given it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be what? Afraid. Look at your neighbor say why are you fierce? So many Christians are walking around because they know not this God. Troubled. Troubled about many things. Their heart is not at peace. How long will you live on the heart that you will not enjoy today? So many years ago, 19, is it 80 or 81, that one elder in our family died. And my uncle that I was living with called Sunny Ade to come and sing. And when Sunny Ade began to see, as a small boy, we in the corner where I was, looking at Pharaoh, looking at them dancing. And he called the name of my uncle and said, I won't call that name for the purpose of uh, security. He called that name and said, How long will you live on this earth that you are wearing a cloth of iron? He was deep as a small boy. I've never forgotten. 98 or 81. He said, how long will you live? How long are you spending on this? That you are aware on war sorry. Or don't mean only one no lie. To one war sorry. Will you be able to move if you are wearing a cloth of iron? In fact, you won't move from your house. It's like you. Instead of your car carrying you, you are not carrying a car. Will you be able to move anywhere? <laughs> Listen to me. When you are troubled, worried, anxious, you are like someone wearing a cloth of iron. How long will you spend on this heart that you will let your heart be jammed with all manners of fear, all manners of worries, all manners of anxiety? Every day is given to you by God to enjoy it. Tell your neighbor, say, enjoy your day. And stop getting worried. Hey, my worker, they are not doing well. And hey, this one, they are not seeing. And hey, this one, how will I do it? You are, you are torn between two opinions. Enjoy your day. <laughs> you enjoy your day. Don't die before your time getting worried. Enjoy your day. If husband come, glory be to God. If the husband did not come, to God, glory be to God. I will enjoy what? My day. Enjoy your day. Young ladies, if the husband come, welcome. <laughs> Say glory to God. If he did not come, don't stop your day. Eh, you have money to buy a car. Go and buy a car. 
Don't say if I now buy cow, one brother may not, they may, they may run away from me. Go and buy car. Listen to me. Enjoy yourself. A real man will marry you with your car. A real man, he will not be intimidated with what you have. You look at what, 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 what he may be working, but you see, there's so much potential. That you look at your cars, what, what is it? Kilo or two, green car. Because he has a good esteem of himself. When you meet a man, you will know that this is a man. Not the one that say, oh, he's using car, let me run away. If my wife had the role play, the time I want to marry her, even with my foot wagging, I would have still married her with her aeroplane. I have a good esteem of myself. You look at me short. I'm not short, though. I'm very tall inside, though. I'm very tall inside. Though. I have a good esteem of myself. You can't write me down. If you write me down, I will catch up with you. I believe greatly in the God that I'm serving. God who makes somebody out of nothing. Out of nobody. Paul the apostle said, I know in him that I believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him. Unto the perfect day. Tell your neighbor, say, get to know God. He boasted, I know him. I'm not going to sit down getting worried and being anxious about things that are happening. One day everything will come to an end. So why should I sit down and get worried and not, and not be happy with myself? Happy with myself? You need to understand. You need to live every day joyful. That's why we have the joy of the spirit. Tell your neighbor, say, live every day joyful. That does not mean there are no issues. Leave the issue, put them aside and say, I go enjoy myself, Jare. Put them aside. Go and dish out food for yourself. Or take yourself to eat. Take yourself. Make yourself happy. Nobody is taking you out. Take yourself out. You have the money. Why do you want to always wait for somebody to take you out? Take yourself out. Ever say, I will take myself out. Allow the peace of God to rule your heart. Acquaint now yourself with him and be what? At peace. A songwriter say, maybe Nigeria say, I want my Adam alone why you live. I don't know who sang that song. Uh -huh. In fact, some people know. <laughs> I hear you. You see, the word is not hard, but we are the one making the word hard. Make up your mind. Look, for as long as the heart remains, there will be trouble. You have to choose what you are going to do when trouble comes. You have to choose. Tell your neighbor, say, I will choose. And your choices or whatever you have chosen. Is a determinant of the God you are serving that you know. If you know that your God is a God that always travel, like my wife, my wife went to Jigawa to serve. The people in Jigawa State, they told the copper, say, Our God, that our God lives in that, that mountain. He has now traveled to Saudi Arabia. Our own God does not travel. Everybody say, In Him we live. Say we move and we have our being. Tell your neighbor, say, in him we live, we move, we have our being. Say God has been our dwelling place from generation to generation. He does not leave us. He said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Listen to me, young man. Let your heart be peaceful. You will soon come out of this problem. By the time you come out, you will say, ah, ah, why did I have to waste my time worrying and anxious? In those days when I, when I did not know God as much as I should know God, you worry about your future. You worry about, that time, 
I put a caption in front of me in my one bedroom apartment. Why do you worry when you can pray? I put it there. When I'm sleeping, I will see it. When I wake up, I will see it. That time, God began to show me my future. We just opened a little veil, and I will see things, beautiful things, even though in an ugly situation. It will make me to see beautiful future in an ugly situation. If you allow your heart to, to be clouded with worry, anxiety, and all, you will not be able to see the way God wants you to see. There's something God wants to show you. Thou will show me the path of life. For in your presence, there is what? Fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasure forevermore. Can somebody rejoice now in his presence? Don't let anything bog you down. Lift your hand and say, shout hallelujah anyhow. I've forgotten that. Just speak one or two things. Hallelujah anyhow. Don't let the devil bog you. It's like you people, you are alien to this kind of song. In those days in FCS, we used to sing that song. Many of you were not born that time. Hey, hey, the FCS people are singing. People started in the 80s. They know those songs. Now people got born again in the 90s. New generation Christian, 2000. But in those days, we sing that song. Hallelujah, anyhow. Don't let the devil bug you down. When that old man comes away, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, anyhow. Can someone shout hallelujah anyhow? When you know God, you will rejoice even in the midst of trouble. You will rejoice because you are taking attention from Satan. When you take attention from Satan, he gets angry, he's not happy. But when you face him, and say, ah, because he wants you to know him very well, so he brings trouble, and you now face him. Pay devil, oh, Jeff, me Female, female, you, he has taken your attention. Everybody say, I will not give him attention. <laughs> say louder, say, I will not give him attention. Because the Egyptian you see today, very soon you will see them no more. I said, you will see them no more. I said, you will see them no more. When now yourself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto thee. When you come close to God, you get to know him. A whole lot will happen in your life. Peace that passeth all understanding. It will make that peace to rule your heart. Glory to Jesus. Another thing that will happen when you get when you know God, when God reveals himself to you and you desire to know him, you will be able to trust him. You will be able to trust him. Knowing God makes people that know him to trust him. But if you don't know him, you will not be able to trust him. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5, he says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Everybody say all. all. He didn't say some of your heart. Many of us, we put, okay, let me trust him with some of my heart. The other part, you use it for fear, for worry, for anxiety, for speaking rubbish about your life. But God said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not work unto your own understanding. Your brain is too small to know God. God is known by revelation. Beyond. With this, great, with this mind, is too weak to know him. That's why we need our spirit to connect to God. Lean not unto your own understanding in all of your ways. Always acknowledging 
You want to go out, you want to do some things, you want to write an exam, say acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. I pray today, your path in this new week be directed by the Lord. I said, I pray for you today. Your path this week, let it be directed by God. Amen. Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on thee because what? He trusted in thee. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. When you trust God, God will keep you in perfect peace. Lord, in this situation, I am not trusting myself. I am not trusting my energy. I am not trusting my uncle that has money. I am trusting in you. I hand over it to you. Then peace, which the Bible called perfect one, will rule your heart. Trust in the Lord, Jehovah. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. God now tells you why you should trust him. Because he has what? Everlasting strength. If you don't know him to be a God of power. A God of strength. A God who can fight on your behalf. A God who can show up in your predicament. You will not be able to trust him. You will think he has left you alone. Has God left you alone? Say he has not left me alone. It doesn't matter. Look, what you are facing is not enough to convince you that God has left you alone. Hey, I am in trouble. He has not left you alone. You are not the first to be in trouble. All the people that ever worked with God, they were in trouble at one time or the other. Abraham, the friend of God, was in trouble at one time or the other. In fact, he fought war. You think somebody will raise an army for fun? If there are no headers to fight, he raised an army. Genesis 14. Is it 318 army? Because in his days, too, there are troubles. He had to raise an army to fight. It was a one man country. He had an army. No wonder God gave, finally gave him a country. By the name Israel. There are troubles. In the days of Isaac, there are troubles. But don't let that one take away your trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. For in the Lord Jehovah is an everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. The strength of man can fail. The strength of kingdom of darkness can fail. But his own strength is everlasting. <laughs> Everybody say everlasting. So you have a God that his power never diminish. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a king of kings and the lord of lords. He is a rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. He is the everlasting God. God who always fight for his own. You need to know that he's an everlasting God. And you need to trust him. Can you help me tell your neighbor, say, trust him. Trust him. Psalm 9 verse 10. Psalm 9 verse 10. He said those who know your name. We put their trust in thee. The reason why many of us are anxious and fearful. Is because we don't know the name. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong word. Tower. The righteous runs into it. And he said, in this part of the world, we don't know what tower is. But the nation of Israel that have been fighting war for a long time, they know what tower is. They know what bunker is. They know what all of this is. Anytime the Palestinians want to throw bomb, they have built a place of protection. The bell will begin to ring. Once that bell, once there are arsenals and some other machines, God noticed that rocket is about to fly. There will be noise. So wherever you are, you leave the place and run to the tower, to the bunker. Because that bunker, the rocket cannot penetrate it. Look at your neighbor. Say, the name of the Lord, the of the Lord. is a strong tower. Righteous runs into it and is safe. 
So wherever you are, in an accident called the name of Jesus, the vehicle will stop. God will deliver you. Ever say, will deliver me. Is it because issues will happen that will make you to know whether you know your God? A man claimed to know God so many years ago. I had the story. He was in a place. He didn't know fan was fan was you know this fan that rose ceiling fan. And his hand just got into the ceiling. Says, "Shapan, now that's the God he was." That's the God he was. You see, because you see, your God will manifest itself at a particular time. He calls upon that is the God that is, he knows. He did not know this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Situation will occur. Whom you call determines who you know. Do you know your God? Help me tap your nose. Do you really know this God? Who have you been calling? What are you hanging in your room now? What is under your bed? What is under your pillow? We just almost we are, we are through with this building. When the construction was on, we saw all manner of things in that building. We bought it. God took over. They broke the wall. They saw. They saw. They saw, what did they say again? Snail, wand with rope. Somebody, that's the protection of somebody. Even the living snail. <laughs> and you know that you like eating snail. This one used the, the, the shell of snail as a protective shell. The workers there called me and said, Pastor, look at what we saw. In the war. Some people were living there before. Only God knows where, where they are. They broke the wall. I did. They saw it planted there. With some rope. I said just put it down. Burn it. Just put it down. Burn it. I drove to the, to the office one day. They see saw. One snail again. In front there. While they were building. And they put a... Uh, what did I tell you they put oil on it? I said, don't let. You see, somebody is trying to scare. He said, the Bible says, who has ever had in himself against God, against God and has prospered? He said, somebody wants to scare you people not to build. He said, this house has been taken over long ago. God owns it. That's why he gave us, he empowered us to buy it. The kingdom of this world has now become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. They put it by the gate where they are building, put it. Say, hey, I say, ah. he say, what are you? You, are, you saw, you saw snail, dead one, and you are scared. I said, just go and put fire on it. Have we not completed it? Can devil stop God? Even if devil is raised to power one million, can he stop God? Listen to me. Listen to me. When you know this God, you will not be afraid of evil tidings. The Bible says your heart will be still. Hey, that woman is a witch oh, with all the God you have inside of you. Some people cannot go to their village because of one woman. That is, you know, many people, times of people are because their teeth has removed. When you grow old too, I wonder how your teeth. Don't look at old women in the village. That God graciously allowed them to live so long and call them a witch. When you are small and you don't know God, they do not kill you. Is it now that they will not kill you? When you grow older, we will see how your own teeth. Whether your teeth will survive 90 years old. A hundred years so. So stop looking at people and tam them because the teeth is rogan, she's a witch. Hey, Christians don't think like that. And if perhaps they are witch, can they now when you are a baby, they carry you, they didn't swallow you. You are a baby. These women that you call witch now, they carry you, they take took you from your mother and they, they play with you. 
you don't know how to call Jesus. That time. You are not even born again. You are, you are an infant. And this witch did not kill you. Is it now that you know Jesus? That you, you, you have Jesus in you. Jesus around you. Jesus on top of you. Jesus all over you. That they will now kill you. Everybody say, I have God all over me. I like that song. He's all over me. He's moving me around. Come and play this keyboard for me. He's moving me around. He's moving me around. He's all over me. He's moving me around. The Holy Ghost power is moving me around. Finally this morning. Trusting God is important to your life and to your destiny. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. When you know him, you will know what he's capable of doing. Listen to me. You will know that he's capable of doing all things. Ever say all things. You will know what he's capable of doing. Knowing him is knowing what God is capable of doing. Ephesians 3.20 He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to his power that worketh in us. When you know him, you will know that your sickness is nothing to him. Because he is a healer. When you know him, you will know that he can deliver you from anything and from any hand. Pharaoh died and his army perished because he said, Who is God? Who is the Lord that I should let you go? He challenged God. Whatever the problem you have, that problem is challenging God. Who is God that I should let you go? The way God proved to Satan, to Pharaoh, that is God, is the way God will prove to your problem. And that problem will let you go. When God had that, God now began his wonders in Egypt. It began 10 plague, one after the other. 10 plague, 10 plague. Those plague, as they come, softens Pharaoh. He knew that he's against something that he can never conquer. A time came when lies invaded the land. Everybody say lies. Invaded the land. And the Witches and astrologers, magician of Pharaoh, could not do the same. They later said, they acknowledged God, said, This is the finger of God. Somebody here today, there's going to be a finger of God upon your life that will take you from that problems in the name of Jesus. They recognize that there is a God. Say, so this is the finger of God. And yet, his heart was hardened. And the last plague came. The last plague was the death of the firstborn. The death of the firstborn broke the camel's back. And there was no death among the Israelis. Everyone who put the blood upon the lintel. Because of the blood, the angel of death could not enter that house. Many of you are not happy. You are not glad. Because the angel of death has not invaded your life. Your home is covered with the blood of Jesus. He 
the blood of sheep, goat, could be so potent that the angel saw it and ran away. Say, I can't enter this place. How much more the blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood of Jesus, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Ebe. Who Kalimbro Tuma Anali Kasata? The blood that speaks better thing than the blood of Ebe. You know, at times we don't know the God whom we are serving. That's why a little thing you begin to fidget and begin to shake to your bone. Little thing, you have forgotten the blood. Angel saw the convent, the old covenant, and ran away. Angel of death. As powerful as he was, he could not enter anywhere the blood is. I want to enter, but the, he saw the blood and ran. How much more will the enemy run from you because the blood is upon your lintel? The blood is upon your life. The blood is upon your life. Everyone said, the blood is upon my life. And death was carried out in Egypt. The scripture said there was wailing. Throughout the land of Egypt. Death of the firstborn. All over. Then Pharaoh called them and said, Go. Go. As I'm speaking now, the power holding you bound is releasing you now in the name of Jesus. He said, go. I'll let you go now. Because God pushed him to the wall. You cannot say who is this Lord. That is why the name of Jesus, every knee shall what? Bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee must bow. That's why when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Let the name of Jesus be synonymous to your mouth. Call the name. Let the name be in you, be around you. Those who know their, your name will put their trust in you. Because inside that name are the glory of God invested. God invested his glory. Which you begin to walk in from his heart. In the name. I have seen the name of Jesus doing wonders. Performing miracles. I have seen the name of Jesus setting the captive free. Breaking the chain. The name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. And is saved. Listen to me this morning. You and I need to Make a move. Tell your neighbor, say, make a move to know this God. Get to know him. Get to know his capacity. Get to know his ability. The scripture says in Jeremiah 32 verse 27. He said, behold, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God is asking a question which requires an answer from everybody. Everyone needs to answer. When you are in a situation, you need to answer that question. Because your knowledge determines your deliverance from that thing. I told you last week when some people said, He John the Baptist. There's a ceiling over there. There's a ceiling because their knowledge, that knowledge is too small to get them to the destiny God wants for them. Someone says, Elijah, there was a ceiling. Someone says, he's like one of the prophets. They were ceiling. And Jesus said, who do you say? Because I am taking you to an unlimited life. What you know takes you to an unlimited life, unlimited provision, unli unlimited glory around your life. And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. Blessed art thou, Peter. You are highly favored. You are 
most enviable. Because what you know has ushered you into a realm of unlimited. What you know can take you to the realm. Very soon, men that once know you, they will not know that you know God by what they will see in your life. There's nobody that God to know God that God will not pull up. I see God pulling somebody up right now. If you are that person, say a big guy, amen. I say, I see my God pulling you up right now. He raised the poor out of the dust. He lifted the beggar from the tongue and he caused them to sit with the priest, even the prince of his people. He caused them to sit with the priest, even the prince of his people. Listen to me. You need to get to a realm that devil cannot cage anymore. Knowledge takes you to a realm, uncaged realm. You lose yourself. I will go. I'm moving on to the high places. Everybody say, I'm moving on to the high places. High places where I can see God face to face. Moses said, show me your glory. I don't want to see any other thing. Your glory. I want to have a talking, walking relationship. I want to see that glory. I want to swim in it. I want to walk in it. I want to see. I want to know what you know. I want to walk in your glory. And God said to him, there's something I will not tell you. Because the face of God is eternity in the future. No man see eternity in the future and will be able to survive to say it. But God said, I will show you my back part. The only person that can see eternity in the future is God. My face. Eternity in the future. Say, so you won't see that one. You will see my back part. When you see it, even that one, your life will never remain the same. I will show you all my goodness. Everybody say, all oh, my goodness. Believe God will have me time to talk on that. Not today, no. May not be next Sunday. Say, I will make all. He didn't say some of my goodness. When you see all of God's goodness, at times, you may not be able to survive when you see all. The little some people see, they run away from God. He gave you a car. Now, you have gotten a car where you can't see you. You cannot imagine God allow you to see everything. That's why God, he wants us in faith, not outside faith. If he knows that you are going to be proud, he will give you little that you can handle. Because some people, when God gives them more than what they can handle, they will begin to look at God afar off as if he's their, he's their, he's their mate. Give you little. Tell your neighbor, say, little you can handle. The little you can handle. Because he needs you in faith than you outside faith. Christians are horrible outside faith. It will look as if the case of a backslider is worse than the case of a, an unbeliever who has not come to know God. That's why he will keep you here. It will keep you in faith. Ever say it will keep me in faith. Who glory? Tell your neighbor, say, I want God to show me his glory. Luke 1 37. For with God all things are possible. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. God took Ezekiel to the valley. Of the valley that was full of dry bones. And God asked him, son of man, 
can this bowl live? I'm talking about the capacity of God. Knowing God know, we make you to know his capacity. It is capacity. When somebody is capable, everybody will say, he can represent us. He can do it. You don't push uncapable people to the ring because the opponent will beat him down. Everybody say, my God is capable. You know how capable he is when you study him in the Bible. Here was a valley only God knows. When those dead bodies have been there, the flesh is no longer was no longer on their body. Their bones were scattered. It's only God knows which head, which call is to one bone. Because everything, everybody says scattered. It's only God who knows the bone of individual that was rotting there. Look at the capacity of God. Because Every bone has a mark. The Bible said God has engraven us on the palm of his hand. Listen to me. More than the DNA, God has his own way of knowing his own people. None of us can our bone mixed up that God cannot separate it correctly. Separate it correctly. And God asked him, can this bone live? He said, Lord, thou knowest. That human being is limited, but God is unlimited. With what I've seen, you are the only one that can answer your own question. And God said, I will tell you to do something. Look at those bones and begin to prophesy. And say, oh, bone, hear ye the voice of the Lord. As he began to prophesy, the Bible says there was a noise. Everybody say noise. And bone to bone. The bone, the head is down there. The legs are here. The hands, all the links of the fingers and toes are scattered away. The Bible says bone begin to find themselves. Find themselves. Find themselves that it was a, a, a jumping from one area to the other. That is what I see God doing in Rema Chapel here. God will put you together once again. God will put you together once again. God will put your passion for Him together once again. Some have lost their passion for God because they don't know God. Passion got lost. COVID has made some people to lose their passion. Probably they only use COVID as an, ex as an excuse. Maybe the passion was not there before. But God said, he will put you together. You will be passionate about him. Everybody say, I will be passionate about him. Say it like, say it, say, I will be passionate about God. When you know him, your passion for him returns. It returns. Boom! Began to come together. The Bible says when they joined together, bone to bone, everything was in the, the, the way he put the, the carcass and the structure together in the beginning. Came together. The Bible said there was no flesh in them. And he said again, son of man, prophesy. Prophesy that this slain may have flesh. He said, I shall prophesy. There came tenders and flesh came upon them. Came upon them. After the formation, the Bible says, and there was no breath in them. He said, son of man, prophesy to the four winds. Let the wind come and breathe into this lane that they may live again. I see God breathing upon your life today. You will live again. I said you will live again. I said you will live again. 
I said you, you will live a time. God will put you together a king. The Bible said they stood up as an army. As an army. They stood up. And God said in verse 11, He said, this is the whole life of us of Israel. You say your bones are dried. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the old house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried. And our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus say the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. Whoever has been buried, talent buried, destiny buried, you are walking around like carcass. But one way the enemy has succeeded in burying certain part of your life, you are coming alive today. I say your glory is coming alive today. I say your glory is coming alive today. I say your glory is coming alive today. I say your honor is coming alive today. In the name of Jesus. He says, I will open your graves. And I will cause you to come up out of your graves. And I will bring you to the place you should be. Every one of us has a place in God and in God's agenda. There is a level you should have been now, but you are far away backward from that place. God is pushing you forward. I said, my God is pushing you forward. I said, my God is pushing you forward. There shall be restoration. Restoration of your dignity. Restoration of your dignity. Restoration of your honor. Restoration of your glory. God is taking you to the place meant for you. He has not made you to be a borrower. But you have been borrowing. God is returning you back. You are going to be a lender to many. I said you will be a lender to many. I said you will be a lender to many. You have, he has not made you to be a failure. But you have failed many times. God is saying, I am resurrecting you. I am making you a giver. You are a giver. Who? You are a success. You are a success. I said, you are a success. From today, the anointing to succeed is coming upon your life coming upon your destiny the anointing to succeed is coming upon your life is coming upon your destiny Woo. come and rise and begin to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray loud in the spirit pray loud place your right hand on your head and begin to pray in the spirit Lega baloba reke tayaba. Ma yega baloba doko sataya. Who? Ma leke tayaka toya. Somebody's story is changing now. Somebody's story is changing now. Somebody's story is changing now. I can feel God is writing a new story concerning your life. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. 